This was, without a doubt, the most entertaining and, I would go as far as to say, the best episode of Fire Force, at least for someone like myself. Arthur has been my favorite character for as long as I can remember. In fact, I think he's been my favorite character since we got introduced to him. He's a lovable idiot. That's exactly what he is. He is a wannabe knight. Every time he tries to be a knight, it's entertaining. And with this week's episode, we get the best taste of that. I didn't know how much I wanted him him to play dress up until I got introduced to this episode. And there's a lot of serious stuff in this week's episode, don't get me wrong and we will break that down. But this episode had me laughing so hard, I was laughing out loud needing to pause the episode because that's how great the humor was, at least for a child like myself, I guess. The idea that you can just strap on a cape and give him a donkey head attached to his crotch and he will believe he is a knight in shining armor charging into battle and that will boost his morale so much that his flames can just wipe the floor with these two soldiers who are trying to pursue Vulcan and that was that was amazing it's almost speechless with how good it was and I know how much of a fanboy this must seem like but I have liked Fire Force from episode one but I haven't been as excited as I currently am in the past few episodes until seeing where it's truly going with its story and characters but watching that sequence play out was amazing we're literally watching our boy Arthur just bounce around being a badass while literally having a donkey head strapped to his crotch and it isn't until they basically make a illusion that mirrors what he looks like until his mind is shattered being like, wait, that isn't what a knight looks like. It's like, well, what is with this show? I don't know, but I love it for that reason alone. I love the idea that you can just look at this like donkey head getting smashed in the air and having like Arthur kind of like crawling towards it. And they make it so dramatic and everyone, including the enemy, is like, this guy's an idiot. Arthur is without a doubt an idiot, but he is a powerful idiot. And granted, they could go the direction like his whole knightlyhood thing is something actually super dramatic from his past. But it doesn't take away from the fact that the present is absolutely gut-punchingly probably the funniest thing I've seen all season. Honestly, I'm watching a lot of funny anime, but this is legitimately the funniest and the most hard I've laughed all anime season. It's childish, it's basic, but I love it because Arthur is a great personality. The author who has made Fire Force is very good at basically always having at least one character in their stories that is so out there, so wild, so just you either love him or you hate him, and I always end up loving him. Arthur is just, what is he? I don't know, but this was everything I wanted. Those like six, seven minutes of him either being a badass or being moping around because he's not as cool as he once thought he was, was everything I wanted and so much more. I was in near tears watching that play out and then just seeing how crushed he was as his donkey wasn't actually a horse. It's like, this man's amazing. He can put his sword in the wrong hand and it will make him weaker. He is so clueless, but man, do you gotta appreciate him. That's why no one would want to kick him out of his crew, because even though they might insult Arthur for maybe not being the sharpest tool in the shed, the man's got heart. You gotta give him at least that. But after all the funny stuff, it definitely got pretty dramatic. And this not only was the funniest, but also the most heartbreaking episode for Fire Force for me. I mean, Vulcan, we just got introduced to the man, but I really like his character and the way the episode starts off he's looking at his family's grave he's talking about how you know even though they've left him even though he has all this work he's found a new family and he's doing okay then they just ruin it for him they literally shoot the kid he probably is gonna die maybe he'll live and the girl who he's been hanging around with betrayed him and is apparently a part of the cultists and just never apparently liked him granted i do think she did kind of come to love this family dynamic even though she's convincing herself right now that it was all a playhouse for the most part based on some of the looks and whatnot it definitely seems like she's acting tough but really wants to help him but probably because she's been indoctrinated something like that she can't actually help vulcan it's still completely heartbreaking to see a man who lost his family once and now is losing it again, but this time in an even more brutal manner. Because he probably didn't have to see his family get killed, and now not only is his family getting killed around him, he's also losing someone to this side that he's always fought against. It's just completely tragic and heartbreaking, and you feel so bad for this man. Someone whose entire goal is creating objects, creating devices that are going to last. He'll smash your objects in your face because if they can't withstand the force and test of time, 
then it's not going to be good. His family literally invented technology that is still standing today and is so powerful. And they want this key that he probably has no idea what it is. It's probably hidden from him and he's never known about it. Else he probably would have snapped at this point and gave the key away. But the idea of just watching Giovanni and just how he was smashing everything in front of him. It was such a insane scene because he just kept repeating the same words as he was violent, either hitting him or hitting his creations. And for someone who is all about withstanding the test of time and making sure his creations don't break that was even more like you basically opened up his heart and poured a bag of salt into it just to add even more insult to injury it was just tragic it was very very powerful and the dramatic stuff didn't take away from the funny stuff prior and the funny didn't take away from the current dramatic they actually balanced the two exceptionally well so when we were getting the ridiculousness and then we transitioned to the dramatic, we didn't go right back into the ridiculous. We had a little bit of silly, but for the most part, everything stayed pretty dramatic once it really got going, which was a very nice narrative flow. It had us laughing for a while, but that was just to get us to let our guard down as they just added even more insult to injury. And this was an incredible episode. I really do think it was my favorite episode of Fire Force without a doubt. It had me near tears laughing because of how funny it was and Arthur being my favorite character. Of course, I'm going to love it for that reason alone. But then when you get into that dramatic stuff, it is so heartbreaking to see such a likable and rootable character not only have his family removed from his life once, but then his new family is getting killed and betraying him. Like, that has to just destroy your mind and seen by some of the imagery, it definitely is. I don't know where they're going to go with this story. I don't know if Shinro's going to be able to come in and save the day or if Vulcan's going to do it himself. They're actually going to kill someone. I don't know where they want to go and that's both exciting and frightening all wrapped up into one. Giovanni is a horrible person, but he has a badass character design and he has badass abilities. I gotta give credit where it's due. He looks cool, and when he's fighting Shinra, he's like literally just, he has like cables on his arms as he like just flies around or sticks needles in you to electrocute you. He has badass abilities, but really all of the either likable or not so likable characters, they usually have pretty cool flame abilities, and I think the technology in this series is just absolutely ridiculous, and I love it for that reason alone. This was a very action-oriented episode that balanced between cool action, hilarious action, and oh my, my heart just hurts looking at that. It's just, this needs to be what Fire Force wants to be for the remainder. I've heard so much good things about where Fire Force goes in the future, and based on some of the manga readers' reactions, it seems like we're entering in what Fire Force truly is and will aim to be for the remainder, at least of this season. I've enjoyed Fire Force from episode one, but it wasn't until the second core really got going that I became honestly foaming at the mouth needing more. It sounds like I'm a fanboy for the past few weeks talking about Fire Force, but I think it's exceptionally well done. Fire Force was a good anime at the beginning with its fair share of issues. However, this is exceptional at times, and at the very least, is great. And this is what Fire Force should continue to aim to be, just exceptionally strong action, great comedy. If you can have characters standing around a workshop and having them interact with each other and think that's entertaining, that's a testament to how strong the character writing currently is in this series. Fire Force is not letting up, nor is it disappointing me. The worst thing I have seen with Fire Force as of late is how they'll pull back on wider shots and they'll only animate the mouth flaps and remove the eyes. There's sometimes they'll hold on to that and it will make it easier for them to animate. Sure, that's a shortcut, you could call it a visual shortcoming, but it doesn't bother me too much, especially seen by the art style that it has. It actually lends itself for more outlandish and cartoonist nature with this design, so it actually isn't a distraction for me, and even if it is, that's not what the episode is built off of. The episodes generally look pretty damn good, especially seen by the fire animation and how they find new ways to incorporate it to their weaponry and just abilities overall. This episode literally hurt laughing so much. I love Arthur, and obviously if you haven't liked Arthur up to this point, this isn't going to change your mind. It's literally amplifying his outlandish nature by about a thousand percent, and I love it. I love seeing the horse, or I should say the donkey, and just all the ridiculous shenanigans and how badass and cringy it was. I like the more mundane action with Shinra, and I love just the simple dialogue to how it just crushes your heart when you see what it was all building up to. I don't know where next week is going to lead us. I think it can go in a multitude of ways, both with death and saving, and I don't know what I want to see. All I know is I thought I knew what to expect with this episode. I thought it was going to be more focused on Shinra and his ability, whether he was being manipulated, was he being controlled, was he going to hurt someone? And they completely threw me for a loop and just did something even more tragic and heartbreaking while also making me laugh the most I have throughout this past anime season. Literally, the most hilarious episode and dramatic of Fire Force to date and the narrative flow didn't feel wonky because of how serious and ridiculous it was. And I think if they continue on this path, Fire Force is going to be an exceptional show 
at least for its second core by the time it wraps up and if future seasons if it does get it can live up to this expectations I think Fire Force could really become something that's special and not just a random shonen of the season like a lot of people were passing it off as during the first core which at times I could understand but at this point I definitely couldn't if people are saying that especially if they have been watching it and keeping up with it. Fire Force is just a blast to follow. I love it. I love everything about it right now. And all the issues I had in the first quarter just currently aren't present. And I I want to see where it's going to go next week. But I'm also incredibly worried. I don't know what I want to see. But I'm incredibly excited to say the least. But manga readers, anime originals, especially anime originals. Did this episode catch you off guard? Especially seen by the dramatic pull. Because usually it's pretty easy to tell when someone's going to betray you. But they really didn't make her that much of a focus. And make her seem shady. I really didn't expect the betrayal. And I definitely didn't expect to laugh as much as I did with Arthur. So whatever anyone is feeling let me know down in that comment section below if you did enjoy this video be sure to drop a like and also hit that subscribe button if you happy new so until next time everyone please take care have a good one